Okay, so you're an old head. You've experienced, you know, racism or whatever. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm I'm interested in your assessment of the contemporary lay of the land. Since we do live in the post-racial reckoning era, we live oh. in the era of activism and, you know, uh, and, and counter activism, so Glenn. Let's let's lay it on the table. You know, there's activism and there's counter or anti-activism. However you want to phrase it. So uh, let oh, me they just say reaction. Excuse me for interrupting. I think that's the word reaction. <laughs> Action and reaction, according to Sir Isaac Newton. See, I could tell you were mathematically <laughs> trained. Uh, that's a joke for those listeners who don't get it. We just pulled a joke, a funny y'all. So, uh, but uh, the so let me just talk about the first thing. Is there racism in science? The answer I like to say to people who ask me that question. Is the sun going to come up tomorrow? Well, the answer is yes, the sun is going to come up. And it's not something that, you know, that people are comfortable talking about. People always want to, when something's unpleasant, they, you know, they don't want to be offensive. And because when you offend someone, they close their ears and then there's no communication going back and forth, right? So let me just give you some examples. Um, I, as you know, Glenn, am... Uh, what you mentioned, I was the president of the American Physical Society in 2021. But back in the 1990s, I was the president of the National Society of Black Physicists. So, in fact, I'm the only living person I know who's been the president of both of these organizations. So, how did the National Society of Black Physicists come about? Well, there was a physicist named William Shockley, whose name I'm sure you recognize. Oh, yeah, Stanford. A Stanford, Nobel laureate. And he joined with uh, socio uh, someone in the social sciences, and they came up with this uh, statement that African Americans are not capable of mentally processing uh, the kinds of things that go on at the very boundaries of uh, science. And in fact, uh, Shockley was quite explicit in this. You're going to say something. No, I was just saying, wow. I mean, think about that for a minute. Think about that claim. African Americans are intrinsically incapable of moving to the frontier of the human knowledge about the cosmos. I mean, that's a terrifying thing to have come out of the mouth of a Nobel laureate. And he laid it out for anyone who wishes to go back and see. He was not shy about telling that story. So when that occurred, um, uh, he, by the way, he was a member of the obviously the American Physical Society. There were a few African Americans who were a member of the organization, and they went to the leadership. And they said, you know, this is this uh, is below the values of this organization, and the leadership ought to release some sort of statement. Nothing was forthcoming. And so this group, this small group of African-American physicists, said it's clear we must set up an organization not to exclude other people, not to exclude other races, but that would advocate for African-Americans moving to this frontier that Shockley says we are totally incapable of reaching. And that was the birth of the National Society of Black Physicists. So it's always been open to people of all races. Uh, it's never been exclusionary. And it states in its mission that it exists to promote the welfare of the of people of the African diaspora in the discipline of physics. That's it's just that simple. But do you think there's a, I mean, so Shockley was Shockley. He was an individual person who had the views that he had just like Watson had the views that he had and whatever. Of course. Do you think there's something systematic or systemic affecting the discipline of physics, which was reflected in the fact of Shockley, in the case at hand, saying what he said? Well, my answer is no. But I this is not universally agreed upon, even by people of the African diaspora. There are people who will tell you, people of color, that um, science and then physics is, Im is embedded in the way that Europeans think and uh, the kind of viewpoints of that, that the science is fatally flawed because it's embedded in that. And so what I'd like to point out is several things. Yes, it is true that s physics in particular is a construction of European males. It starts with Sir Isaac Newton, and it blossoms throughout the last several centuries 
and is the basis of our of uh, bountiful living as humans today. That's a fact. However, when you look at physics, it's also a body of of thought and observations and knowledge, and in that body of knowledge, as far as I have experienced over the last fifteen years, I do not see how racism is embedded in the body of this work. Now, a lot of people will disagree with me, and, I, and I'd like to say, well, let's look at uh, basketball. Give me the names of the African-American athletes who started basketball, who invented basketball. And you're grinning because you know the answer is that was basketball was invented by a gentleman by the name of James Naismith, who was a European ethnic male, right? And that doesn't stop African-Americans to moving to the forefront and achieving at the highest level. So why should I believe because something is invented by a particular person or group of people that that prevents other groups of human beings from excelling and reaching the very outer rims of excellence in those areas?